using using the Nixon Paul method starts with developing a plan. In this plan, we need to determine the average depth of the litter in the house and the dimensions of the house to establish the cubic feet of litter that's already available. Next, we need an estimate of the average bird weight. This information is used to calculate the pounds of meat per square foot of floor space. Based on the previous experience that we've had, we determined that 0.8 inches of litter is needed per pound of meat per square foot of floor space. This is the minimum amount, and with larger birds, this factor should be increased to 1.0. On a volume basis, this approximates one part carcass to two parts litter, but excludes the addition of material that's needed for the base and cat layer to cover the windrow. Let's look at an example of calculating litter need for in-house composting. In this analogy, we have a house that's 40 foot wide and 500 foot long with 25,000 uh, rollers weighing four pounds and three inches of litter depth inside the house. This would be 100,000 pounds of meat divided by 20,000 square feet gives us five pounds of meat per square foot. That five pounds of meat per square foot times that factor of 0 0.8 gives us four inches of litter that's required. So in this situation, we need essentially one inch of litter or 1,600 cubic feet of more carbon material or bedding to complete the in-house composting process. There are three basic steps to in-house composting using the mixing pile method. They are first to scoop up both the birds and the litter and place in the center of the house in a windrow on a base layer of litter from three to five inches. This material is gradually shifted over to the center, and in doing so, we try to get a uniform mix of litter around those carcasses. And the final step is to cover all the birds or carcasses with four to six inches of litter or bulking agents such as sawdust, shavings, or compost. The final windrow should not exceed six feet in height and are typically 14 feet wide at the base. Temperatures of compost should reach 130 degrees within the first five days. As the temperatures start to drop, this is an indication the pile should be turned. One option is to turn the windrow inside the house. This is particularly important when dealing with a highly infectious disease such as avian influenza. After turning, any exposed tissue must be covered with litter or bulking agent. When there's a need to free the house for repopulation with birds, the compost can be transferred to outside of windrows or a manure shed. Again, any surface tissue must be covered with bulking agent, and for outside windrows, it may need to be covered with a tarpaulin or compost fleece. As a general guideline, for four-pound birds, the first turn should be about 10 days, and with larger birds, a 10-pound bird, it should be around 16 days. Within as little as 10 days after the first turn, 100% of the soft tissue should be degraded and the compost can be removed and land applied in accordance with the nutrient management plan.